oh my god oh my god oh my god friends the day is finally here and i don't even know if i have the words hi friends i hope you're having an inspiring day we are doing probably the most exciting unboxing of my life i'm going to try to breathe through this because this is the first time we're doing this. This is the first time I'm doing this outside of the store. This is the first time I'm doing this period full stop. And this may just be the most exciting video I've ever created in my life. Not to be dramatic, but you know, being dramatic. So I got a call this past week to come into the Hermes store. And if you are already in this video, you already know what it is, but we are going to start from the beginning. If you're unfamiliar with my luxury purchase bag buying process, for me, every bag kind of has a special meaning or milestone behind it. This for obvious reasons is a milestone in itself, but for me, it came at such a serendipitous time because I'm actually celebrating my 30th birthday this year. I'm really proud of the person I think I've become and am becoming. And this bag, I feel like just encompasses all of that because it truly is my mecca bag. When it comes to designer, my philosophy is it's an art because here's the reality. Nobody needs an expensive luxury bag, right? It's something that you have to enjoy and that you have to kind of look at as more than just, you know, a few pieces of leather and some hardware. To you, it really needs to mean something or feel like art. And for me, a lot of the Hermes brand and its product hold that artistic value for me. I think the history is so rich and so interesting. And so I like to start any of my unboxings with a sort of a brief little history about Hermes. So if you didn't know, Hermes is a French brand, hence the name Hermes and not Hermes or Herms. If it bothers you how I say Hermes, I'm sorry, me. C'est Hermes, pas Hermes or Herms. Et voilà, on va utiliser le nom Hermes. So if you're unfamiliar, Hermes started in 1837, so it is a rich house of a lot of history. The company was founded by Thierry Hermes, and originally it was for horse saddles. So the leather was really honed in on creating these accessories for horses and for equestrians. They are best well known for producers of leather, specifically for saddles at the time, but it's kind of evolved into becoming this powerhouse for just a leather craftsmanship in general. And if you look at a lot of the Hermes silhouettes, they're very understated. They don't scream the brand name very loudly. They don't really have a monogrammed logo pattern like many of the other brands out there. They're really focused on the leather quality. And I think that that's so interesting. It is still a majority family owned business today, which I also think it's really interesting. And if you're unfamiliar with the pillar bags, the quota bags, as they're otherwise known as, they are known as the Birkin, the Kelly, and the Constance. And these three bags are really highly sought after. You will have heard of a wait list or a wish list for these bags because despite the overwhelming demand for these bags, from Hermes, they don't necessarily match the supply to the demand. So it ends up creating this sort of waiting game frustration and honestly, a lot of the time disappointment. And I definitely recognize that. I think Hermes as a brand is very unique in the way that they approach the consumer market. I think they're really different in the way that they do business because it's not necessarily how much money can we make, but how can we maintain the quality of our goods and our core, mission whilst still being a business. And I think that's really unique because I don't think a lot of the other brands do this. It also naturally creates this desire and want for these elusive bags that are the pillar bags. Let's talk about the shopping experience at Hermes. So I was mentioning there's a lot of frustration, a lot of disappointment. A lot of the times you'll want a bag from Hermes and you'll say, oh, you go into store, I want this bag. And they'll say, no, we don't have it, sorry. And it'll just be continuously that answer. And it can be very frustrating as a consumer and I totally get it. I think my best advice is to build a relationship at Hermes. It is odd, it is strange. In a world where you buy and get the next day, Amazon, it is so strange as a consumer not to get what we want when we want it. And I think that that's one and it's definitely a big frustration. I went into collecting Hermes as a collection, not necessarily a need. As I was mentioning, none of us need a designer bag. This is not a need, this is a luxury. And so for me, I wasn't really upset at the waiting game. I kind of felt like this was a part of collecting art. You know, there's only one Monet out there. Um, you know, there's only one Picasso. There's only one of those masterpieces. And so I didn't mind kind of waiting. I actually felt like it created 
more of a appreciation for the art of the bag than anything, but I can understand that it's a very frustrating experience. So I put this particular bag uh, on my wish list, which is how they kind of do it. You go to an essay, you're like, I really like to build a wish list. They actually put in the parameters of all of the specs of that bag that you want. So if you want like a Kelly, but you want it in black, gold hardware, what type of leather you want, Epsom, Togo, all that, they put that into your wish list. And it's actually a very specific bag that you're essentially on a wait list for. You can't just go and be like, I want a Birkin, because I think everybody would go in there and say, I want a Birkin, right? You have to be really specific. And with that, you kind of build that relationship with your essay over time, and they know that that item is on your wish list. So I really recommend building a relationship with your sales associate, I really, which is essay, uh, I really recommend, you know, having a love for the brand, buying things from the brand, not just to, you know, get that quota bag, but because you love the brand. Um, and I think that these pillar bags have kind of become these sort of appreciation purchases for valued customers of Hermes. It doesn't always it isn't always the case. You might hear some stories of some people who just walk in and get one, but I feel like the overwhelming uh, factual anecdotal evidence that I have of people who have purchased these have a really deep relationship with their SA. For privacy reasons, my sales associate has requested that I keep her name uh, out of this video uh, just because, you know, they do get bombarded a lot with a ton of requests and can be a lot for a single human to deal with, you know, a ton of customers that are really upset and really angry. That seems to be the stories she tells me um, that you know people come in and are demanding and are really frustrated and there's nothing she can do. So yes, I did get it in, I will disclose, the Toronto store location, which happens to be my home store. I know this was long-winded, but I feel like I will get a lot of questions and I had a lot of questions about how to get these pillar bags and what that looked like. And really, I think the only common de denominator is having a love for the brand purchasing from the brand, not because you have to fill a quota, but because you really love and appreciate the brand. Uh, I think that that goes a really, really long way. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the unboxing. I think I, think I just might cry. Here it is. Here's the moment, friends. With any Hermes purchase comes in this beautiful orange iconic bag. Inside, you're going to have your box you also have your receipt as well in case you're interested but really not that exciting little envelope embossed with Hermes your receipt in there we will get to the pricing of this bag uh, very shortly but let's just let's just see her let's let's take a look at her first so you're gonna have beautifully wrapped ribbon just oh my goodness oh my goodness you know I think we have heard so many stories about this elusive bag that it's ended up having like a life of its own, a concept of its own. You know, I remember being young and watching Sex and the City and seeing Samantha wait for this bag, get so frustrated that there was like a three year wait list. I will say I put my uh, wish list in maybe about a year and a half ago, but I've been purchasing from the Toronto store um, as just a, a consumer, a client for, gosh, maybe two and a half, three years. Inside, you've got this beautiful, Box. It is not able to be broken down if you're unfamiliar with Hermes boxes They are meant to keep and store and for bags any Hermes bag, but especially a pillar bag Please 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 keep the box because these things retain so much value They go up in price just because of the fact that they are so elusive Literally the moment you walk out the store with this item the moment you've made this purchase You've got this huge investment item um, like three times its valued retail price on the resale market. So really is a piece of art. I can never imagine selling this, but I mean, there are people who do. Um, I just couldn't imagine it. So you've got like this little hangy tag here uh, that hangs off the side of your box, describes your bag. And okay, here we go. Inside the box here is your beautiful dust bag with your beautiful bag. You've got a bag cushion here because you know, these bags are so incredible that they need their own little pillow to travel in. Another really interesting thing is it comes with a rain protector and it literally covers your bag so that it can stay happy, healthy. Um, and I love that about, you know, luxury purchases that really understand that it's a luxury, you know? This is not an everyday occurrence, at least, you know, not for the average person, definitely not for me, but, um, 
The Raid Protective Gear is something I find is such a moment of luxury. You also get a little care booklet uh, from Hermes. These come with most of, if not all, of their leather bags. It just tells you how to take care of your leather. I can barely believe this is happening, but inside your dust bag is <sighs> my very first Birkin! <sighs> so if you're unfamiliar with this bag, it is the Birkin 25. This is in Togo leather. This is what she looks like. She comes with her own very protective felt because, come on, she needs to be protected. But let's get into it. She literally smells like art. She smells like art. I don't even want to touch her. I just want to put her on a shelf. I mean, I am not of the uh, camp where art should be on a shelf. I feel like it needs to see the world. I feel like the world needs to see her. So, um, I mean, I'm not of that camp. You've got little protective film on all of the hardware pieces here. Um, once you open up the bag, it looks like this. And there she is. Here she is. Here she is, Miss Birkin herself. I'm sorry, this video is gonna be a lot of me just just fangirling over this bag because this is the iconic bag that I think will literally hold a place in my heart forever. This is the bag I think I've wanted ever since I was a little girl. I never thought it would be possible and here we are. I feel like it means so much to me to have this bag on my 30th. Um, I feel like I can look back on this unboxing video and kind of celebrate this with you. All right, let's talk about the Birkin for a quick second here because I feel like a lot of people know about the Birkin, we've heard about the Birkin, but we don't really know the history of the Birkin. Jane Birkin, who this bag was named after, was an English actress. She spent a lot of her time, however, in France. Legend goes she was on an Air France flight. She happened to be sitting beside Jean-Louis uh, Dumas, who at the time was the executive chairman of Hermes. Legend has it that she had a straw bag, everything flew everywhere, uh, and she was complaining about how there wasn't a bag that fit all of her needs, especially as, you know, a young mother. And on that flight, the Birkin was born. Legend has that they drew silhouettes and things like that on a napkin and they talked it over and that was the birth of the beautiful Birkin bag. Now the original Birkin is not the 25, which is what this size is here. This is the smallest of the Birkins, uh, but there are larger sizes and those larger sizes would have been what uh, Jean-Louis Dumas created for Jane Birkin. In her lifetime, she's been seen carrying tons of the, her namesake bag, for obvious reasons. But the Birkin really kind of rose to its popularity and its fame in the 90s. So very recent, it's not the oldest or very, very old bag silhouette, not like my Bolid, which is, you know, like one of Hermes's first bags with a zipper, things like that. It doesn't have that level of history. This is definitely a modern historical bag. So it's created as a rectangular silhouette hold all sort of bag. It has a burnished flap and saddle stitching. So this bag in particular is called the Birkin 25 with gold hardware, Togo leather, and a return uh, stitching. There's also cellier, uh, which is kind of like a sharper edge. What I think is so phenomenal is bags like this take almost up to 48 hours to create. They are still made by hand in mid-sized ateliers still in France, and I think that that's so magical to know that this bag literally traveled over the sky, all of Hermes's products are still made in France uh, and their bags, their leather goods are still made in those same ateliers. Uh, just to think somebody spent so much time and effort on this bag makes me really feel like it is art. Now let's talk about price because there are so many different pieces of information out there and here's the reason why. Birkins, Kelly's, Constance's, really any of the Hermes bags change in price depending on how it's made, it's different sort of components, you know, whether it's cellier or not, whether it's, you know, gold hardware or not, whether the leather is Togo or Epsom. Um, there's so many different leathers and so many different colors. Sometimes the colors change the price and you obviously have regular leathers, you have exotic leathers, and that helps to vary the prices so broadly that it's really hard to nail down the exact price. Now, the price of this particular model for me was a 
11,100 Canadian dollars then plus tax. Um, but these bags don't really fluctuate too much over years, not like something like a Chanel, but they are dependent, price dependent on how they are made and what they're made of. Let's get into a little review of my Birkin 25. So you've got the silhouette, not really much happening out here other than you've got that Herbes Paris uh, stamped here. A little fun fact for you, that stamp will always match the color of the hardware. So if it's gold hardware, it's going to be a gold stamp. If it's palladium hardware, it's going to be with that uh, palladium stamp. It's always going to match. You're never gonna have a mismatched stamp color. The handle here is a smaller handle. There are different varieties of uh, the Birkin where you have longer handles, but this one would sit quite tight around my wrist. It really is meant to be a hand or wrist bag. Inside you've got the flap here. A lot of people just wear this open, um, but it looks kind of like this. Inside you've also got the chain detail. So this is what hooks on to your bag. It is the iconic uh, little bag tag here that comes with your Birkin. It has a key lock uh, and this little carrying case for your keys. And inside your Birkin 25, you are going to have a very large opening, not much going on. You've got a small pocket on the front part of the bag here. The leather is so supple. Um, Togo leather is great though because it doesn't scratch, I find, as easy um, as something like, you know, Epsom leather. Epsom leather is pretty good too, but Swift leather is that soft, uh, like half skin, so really, really smooth. That would scratch very easy. On the back of the bag here, you have a zipper. Not a really large pocket, but those are what's inside the Birkin bag. So a lot of people will normally carry the bag kind of like this, keep the flap open. It'll be a large rectangular um, sort of throw all as it was meant to be. This does not have a crossbody strap, unlike something like the Kelly does. Another component I wasn't sure of but love is the fact that it has feet. But overall, it is a structured bag. Togo leather does wear a little bit softer over time, um, so you will see her take a little bit of shape. On the back of the bag, nothing at all except for these like two little notches that are what hold the side of the bag. So this bag was meant to expand like this, hence the side straps. And the way that these kind of fasten in is it actually hooks into these little hooks here. And these are what clasp into the front hook. I will show you what it kind of looks like on, uh, as I was mentioning, it really is a hand, arm, wrist maybe bag. This is what the Birkin was known for. It's not meant to be on your shoulder. But I am so excited to have shared this moment with you guys. I feel like this bag just means so much to me outside of just being, you know, a Birkin bag that, you know, everybody wants. This bag to me, represents these three decades that, you know, we've spent almost more than a day, more than a third of my life I've spent with you online. And I don't know, I just, I'm feeling really sentimental about the times. I'm really feeling sentimental about, you know, myself and my accomplishments and how far I've come and how far I've pushed myself. Um, I'm really happy to give myself this gift. I think that that's how luxury purchases should feel. You should never be buying something because somebody else loves it um, or that you think it'll make you look cool or for the status. Obviously, Birkin bags hold that. Uh, but for me, you know, I just grew up looking at this bag and thinking, you know, once I have this bag, I will feel like that'll be a time in my life where I made it, you know? And, and I really do feel like that. Uh, this represents that time in my life where I feel like that. So thank you so much for being with me here and celebrating this purchase with me. Uh, I hope that this is just the start of my Hermes pillar bag collection. Um, I find all the bags are art. I love my Picotin, I love my Bolide, um, I love my Mini Evelyn. There's so many bags that I, I love and adore, but hopefully this is not the last of the pillar bags that I will have in my lifetime. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with me, friends. If you like this video, a reminder to give it a big inspired thumbs up. I will always share these videos because I feel like they're memories for me as much as they are sharing information with you. Comment below. Let me know if you've ever wanted one of these bags, what your thoughts are. Um, I mean, like I said, luxury purchases should be made for you and you alone, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on what your dream bags look like. 
And if you're new to the Inspired Family, we would love it if you join us and subscribe. But with that, friends, I'm feeling all the feels. I'm going to go enjoy this bag. Um, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have an inspiring rest of your day. Remember, kindness doesn't cost a thing. And we'll talk to you next time. Me and Birkin. Me and Miss Birkin over here. I just, I can't even believe this happened. I can't, I still can't believe this happened.